from a flatbed in China that knocked a massive steel beam onto a passing car, and a semi-truck in North Carolina that fell victim to an infamous bridge, to a delivery driver who watched his roof get peeled off like a can opener, and much more. Here are 15 minutes of trucks crashing into bridges. Dezhou, China is a prefecture-level city in Shandong province. It's home to about 5.7 million people and one very unlucky driver. Or lucky, depending on how you look at it. It was October 21st of 2019. A flatbed driver loaded an excavator onto his rig and hit the road. Up ahead, he saw a giant steel barrier across the road. These height restriction barriers keep oversized vehicles from driving through certain areas. This guy thought he could make it. He thought wrong. The excavator's cab clips the barrier. Apparently, these things aren't very secure. It pops up and lands on a white sedan passing underneath. Zoomed in, you can tell the excavator wasn't even close to getting under the barrier. The white sedan is lucky its hood absorbed the blow. Emergency services arrived and tended to the driver. He suffered a few minor injuries, but was ultimately okay. Looking back, it seems like the white sedan sped up to try and beat the barrier. Look at where he is when the truck hits the beam. We think he would have been okay if he just slammed on the brakes. Have you ever taken one look at something and thought, yep, that's a terrible idea? Well, if you were working with these Indonesian men in December of 2016, you would have been the only voice of reason. We're not sure where in the country this fiasco took place. Our driver pulled up to this rickety booby trap and assumed he could clear it. Confidence and stupidity are a dangerous combo. The bridge looks like something a child made with popsicle sticks. Our driver is lucky he escaped at the last possible second. The truck fell through as soon as his feet touched the wood. Let this video be a valuable lesson. If something looks like a bad idea, it probably is. It's official. Spider-Man lives in Yuyang, China. The prefecture-level city sits on the eastern shores of Dongting Lake and the Yangtze River. It's home to about 5 million people and one guy whose spidey senses saved his life. It was July 19th of 2019. A tractor trailer was hauling a 20-foot shipping container toward the river when it came upon a low-clearance bridge. Meanwhile, a local man was getting ready to hop on his scooter and parked under a bridge. Seconds later, he was running for his life. Our local Chinese Spider-Man walks through a door and heads to his scooter. We're not sure if that's his home or a maintenance building near the bridge. It looks like he bends over to write something as the truck arrives. The shipping container clips the bridge and slides off the side. The man's spidey senses tingle and he sprints away as the container crushes his scooter. The truck nearly flips but lands on its tires. In slow motion, you can see how close the man came to being flattened like a pancake. Okay, so maybe he doesn't have spider powers. Anyone would have heard the crash and ran. Still, you can't deny this dude was quick on his feet. The next few crashes come from a famous bridge in Durham, North Carolina. It's technically called the Norfolk Southern Gregson Street Overpass, however, it's earned several nicknames over the past few decades. Some call it 11 foot 8, others call it the can opener and a select few call it the Gregson Street Guillotine. It earned these names because trucks, buses, and other tall vehicles love crashing into it. Since 2008, there have been nearly 200 crashes at 11 foot 8. A local man named Jürgen Henn works in an office nearby. He set up several cameras to capture trucks crashing into the can opener. According to him, the bridge claims at least one victim every month. 
On November 2nd of 2017, Jurgen's cameras captured one of the best crashes yet. A few minutes later, a coach bus almost suffered the same fate. Luckily, they stopped in time and were able to turn left. According to Jurgen's website, the drivers were trying to beat a light when they sliced the top of their truck off. Both men were taken to the hospital for minor injuries. This was crash number 125 since April of 2008, when Jurgen first set up his cameras. When 11 foot 8 was designed in the 1920s, the standard bridge height was 11 feet 8 inches. Think about it, they didn't have tall semi trucks back then. In 1973, the standard bridge clearance was raised to 14 feet, 28 inches taller than the can opener. But here's the thing bridges built before 1973 didn't have to be raised or rebuilt. Despite multiple warning signs and an infamous reputation, drivers keep crashing into 11 foot 8. Take this driver from March 28th of 2019. They had the honor of being can opener victim number 145. If someone asks, why do they call it the can opener? Just show them this clip. Once again, another impatient trucker tried to beat a yellow light and paid for it. Now, instead of arriving 30 seconds early, they'll be several days late. Jurgen said crash number 145 was the biggest mess he had ever seen. The semi was stuck for 90 minutes before they could winch it from the can opener's jaws. Luckily, the driver was okay and nobody got hurt during the crash. Later that night, sometime around 9, the truck finally took the left turn it should have taken several hours ago. For all the trucks that have crashed into it, it's amazing that 11 foot 8 hasn't suffered any serious damage. Perhaps that's a testament to old school American infrastructure. Or greed. Now the burning question on everyone's mind is why haven't they done anything to fix it? Well, according to Jurgen, our resident 11 foot 8 expert, it depends on who they are and what fix it means. The bridge is owned by the North Carolina Railroad Company. Remember, that bridge is a set of active train tracks. They're more concerned with maintaining operations and ensuring the bridge is safe. To them, they fixed the problem by installing a crash beam. Instead of hitting the bridge, trucks simply crash into the beam. They lose their roofs, the bridge stays intact, and the trains keep moving. The city of Durham installed low clearance signs on all three blocks leading to the can opener. Flashing LED sensors warn drivers who are too tall. Furthermore, the speed limit leading up to the bridge is 25 miles per hour. Trucks should be able to stop and turn left or right as long as they aren't speeding. Of course, most of them are speeding when they hit the bridge. Some suggest lowering the road, but that's impossible. There are sewer lines a few feet below it. Digging it up would cause too much chaos. The next option was raising the bridge, but nobody wanted to spend the money. Then, in October of 2019, the North Carolina Railroad Company shelled out $500,000 to raise the bridge 8 inches to 12 feet 4 inches. Jurgen was there to document the project and explain what the future holds for the famous bridge. The new height is still below regulation clearance. Getting it to 14 feet was never going to happen, so the city of Durham left all the warning signals in place. They hoped raising the bridge would solve the problem, but deep down, Jurgen knew it wouldn't. The new bridge claimed its first victim on November 26th of 2016. 22 days after being raised to 12 feet 4 inches. 
Luckily for this driver, the can opener only got a tiny nibble. But you can tell the driver thought about it before going under. He decided to ignore the flashing lights and test his luck. It was like nails on a chalkboard watching that truck scrape the beam. Jurgen said he hustled outside and grabbed the piece that fell off. To him, it's a unique souvenir after 11 years of dedication. Compared to the other crashes, number 151 didn't seem too bad. In fact, you could argue that raising the bridge paid off in the end. In February of 2020, another driver decided to give it a shot. This time, the bridge took a little more off the top. It was beginning to look like the can opener's glory days were behind it. Then, in September of 2020, crash number 157 happened. The worst part about this crash was that the driver stared at the overheight must turn sign for 60 seconds while waiting for the green light. From another angle, you can tell they were doomed from the get-go. You can even hear a few people react near the camera. They must have seen the truck approaching and knew they were about to get a good show. It took about 20 minutes to deflate the truck's tires. Only then were they able to back out and turn down another street. By Jürgen's count, there have been 29 crashes at the can opener since raising the bridge. The worst year was 2015, with 19 recorded accidents. There were only 8 in 2020, but another 13 in 2021. The most satisfying crash occurred on May 13th of 2021. It's what you'd call a perfect peel. Here we have another classic case of an impatient driver trying to beat the light. Still, watching the roof collapse like an accordion before falling off is oh so satisfying. So far, 2023 has been a down year for the Gregson Street guillotine. It has only claimed two victims so far, one in February and one in July. There's no telling what the future holds for 11 foot 8 plus 8. But if the past is any indicator, it is far from claiming its final victim. Back on October 15th of 2020, a truck driver was minding his business when suddenly disaster struck. The man was carrying a wind turbine blade on the bed of his truck, but apparently had not realized just how tall his load was. As he drove down the road in the city of Chongqing, he approached an overpass. CCTV footage captured the moment the blade crashed into the bridge, causing the structure to partially collapse. Aftermath footage shows the extent of the damage, as the entire highway was closed and part of the bridge was hanging down onto the road below. Despite the extensive damage, no one was injured in the incident, including the truck driver and any nearby cars. The cause of the collapse was determined to be the height of the wind turbine blade, which was higher than the height clearance of the bridge. The incident was a costly one, but thankfully no lives were lost. The case is being investigated, and authorities are urging all truck drivers to be mindful of the height of their loads in the future to prevent similar incidents from happening. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.